Alright Pittsburgh Steel fans, Matty P here with another episode of Steelers Touching Under in our War Room series, the series that's focused on putting in the minds of Omar Khan, Mike Tomlin, Andy Weidel as they look to put together a winning roster in 2024 and beyond, a roster that I say should be competing for a 7th Lombardi Trophy, provided they can improve. Alright, in today's show we are looking at draft prospect Christian Jones out of the Texas Longhorns, 5-year player there, really interesting sort of guy, um, probably definitely locked in to be a right tackle in the NFL, um, has played with a left tackle in college. I'm going to cover all of him and more because I think he could be a real sleeper in this draft no matter which team gets him. But for the Steelers in the third or if he slips to the fourth, it could be really interesting if they go center corner to start off with or they miss their top five, um, for whatever reason, tackle that they've got rated up there. This guy could be what you need. I think he's a better prospect than um, Dan Moore coming out. He's a guy that really will shore up your line. He's involved in a lot of big plays for the long ones. But let's find out more about him. So I think the first thing to say is that the reason why I say he's a sleeper, um, he had a very good senior bowl. He had a very good combine. So he started to get on people's radar. But if you look at like sites like NFL Draft Buzz, who have an, a fantastic mock draft simulator, he's ranked as the 19th best tackle behind, um, from an athletic perspective and overall rating, behind guys like Matt Goncalves out of Pittsburgh, um, Sato Lamia as well out of Utah has got a high rating, Blake Fisher, Dominic Pooney, Patrick Paul from Houston. Um, and then, of course, obviously, all the first-round tackles that everyone would be pretty well aware of. Um, but a couple of the other sort of guys ahead of him are um, Sue Mattia out of um, BYU, Jordan Morgan, um, and, and that sort of thing. But they also have Graham Barton listed as a tackle. He's going to shift inside. So there are a couple of these guys that will shift inside as well. Um, so it is interesting in that perspective, but he's probably not in the – for a lot of people, the top 10 tackles, I actually see him as a 10th, top 10, top 12 tackle in this draft. But part of that is because he doesn't play left. Um, he can play left if you had to, but you wouldn't slot him. You wouldn't be your, your ideal thing in the NFL. You just try and play him at right and allow him to get used to that. Now, if you look at PFF, uh, Pro Football Network, not PFF, Pro Football Network, um, their big board, they have him in at the 188th best player overall. And I think he works out to be about the 20th um, 18 to 20th best tackle as well. But there are a lot of other tackles on this list that I actually have it way down um, in my comparison to him. And it's not just because I'm a Longhorns fan. It's because of what I've seen. And Christian Jones had a very good combine. Christian Jones had a good senior ball, unlike a lot of the, like these guys. So he's kind of interesting. As I said, he was someone that was kind of sitting around that fourth or fifth. Even Donald Jeremiah said maybe he's scraped into to the back end of day two now, um, mid-day two pick. Um, within the third round, within the third round, not in the second round. Um, but who knows in terms of a run on, on, on tackles. I do think you're drafting a little bit high mid-third, um, but if you took him at the back end of the third, I kind of get it, um, particularly if you're trading up from the fourth spot from the, from the, one of the fourth round picks the Steelers have, or if they use a fourth round spot at 120, that would be ideal. Now, let's look at his stats. So his final year at Texas, he had a pretty good pass block grade overall of 78.1. That's pretty good. Um, he had an overall grade um, on, in the, on the run side of things as well, which was pretty decent. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, but one of the things that I think overall with him that was really interesting is he only had one really bad game, and that was against BYU. The rest of his pass, his pass block grade now, people might, might not like PFF, but at least you can kind of see the averages here. You know, 78.7 against Rice, 84.9 against Bama. One of the biggest games this season that meant a lot for the for the Longhorns in terms of how their season would go, beating Bama there. Now, Bama didn't turn out to be the team that, you know, they have been in previous years, but they were still pretty good. Um, TCU, um, a year out of obviously making college football playoff, um, they're 85.7 grade against them. Texas Tech, 78.7. That's always a tough game. Um, Washington was a pretty decent game for them in um, – in the college football playoff um, with a 69 there, but not his worst, nor his best performance by any stretch of the imagination. In terms of pressures allowed this year, um, he only allowed uh, one sack overall this year, two quarterback hits, eight hurries, and 11 pressures. Um, he also has only allowed 13 sacks in his career, and in the last two seasons, he's only allowed four. Um, a lot of the other ones came when he played predominantly at left tackle as well, so that should be said. He's only allowed 11 quarterback hits in his career, he has allowed 51 hurries and 75 pressures, um, but he does play pretty well from that perspective, as I said. Um, and if the pressures allowed, um, you know, it's only five of them have resulted in sacks, and they were both years that he played at left tackle as well. So that, that should be mentioned. If I look at his overall blocking grades as well, because that's what we really want to know, because he's very rarely an inline tight end. As I said, run blocking grade this year was a 75, pass blocking grade was a 78, 
had an overall offensive grade of 75. Last year, he had an offensive grade of 70, 68 run block, um, 73 pass block. So he is a bit more of that pass block guy, but it's not like he's the worst run blocker coming out. Um, definitely, as I said, on par with what Dan Moore, Dan Moore was doing, if not better. Dan Moore was drafted in the fourth round. Um, as I said, right tackle, the last two years alone, the last two years alone, he's played 780 snaps at right tackle. He's a very experienced offensive lineman. 3,219 snaps on offense. Huge. He's only lined up at inline tight end twice in his career. So he's not going to be necessarily a Zach Bannon type. Um, he's not going to be like what we've seen from previous, um, you know, s- s- sort of that el- tackle eligible um, for, for the Steelers. This guy, if, you, if you're drafting him, you're playing at right tackle or is your depth piece at right tackle. Um, that's not to say he's not athletic or anything like it. He's not as athletic as other tackles, though. Um, but very experienced and has had 700 um, snaps as well of his 3,200. Um, so almost a quarter of his snaps he's played at left tackle. So as I said, that versatility is big. He's only played one snap a guard. So he's very much a tackle prospect. And that is why you don't see a top 12, top 15 grade on him from a lot of people. He's pretty much a locked right tackle. Doesn't have the versatility necessarily to go inside. And that is why his grade is, is worse. But he, what do the Steelers need in this draft? They need a center and they need a right tackle to move Broderick to left, right? The centers are going to they're going to have to pick one earlier than this. So therefore, they're either going to have to pick between corner, wide receiver, a few different other positions. So why not go after someone that is a specialist right tackle later on? What's the worst that that happens there? Um, very cheap too when you start going down the draft rounds. He is someone will take some time to develop. Um, but in, if they can hope that Dan Moore can carry the baton in early parts of the season, that could be really helpful. And then you work Christian Jones into the lineup. We know there's going to be injuries. Uh, but I've seen worse tackle prospects coming out of the college, um, you know, coming out of college into the pros the last few years, and they've all played okay, if not pretty well. So I'm quite excited about what Christian Jones will mean to the NFL. I was like this last couple of years ago on Cordell Wilson. He's had a decent career so far. Um, I wasn't as high on him, though, as I am um, on Christian Jones. He had a decent career for Cincinnati so far. So, Look, you let me know in the comments. Do you like this idea of Christian Jones? Do I just have my orange and orange and white goggles on when it comes to him being a Texas Longhorn as I'm a Texas Longhorns fan? Or is this a guy that you're really open to so the Steelers can get a top center, top corner um, in the draft? And especially if they miss their top tackles, the best player available is key. The Steelers also need inside linebacker. The Steelers need a D tackle too. So the Steelers can get cornerback, center, D tackle, um, or corner, center, inside linebacker. And then you're going to get this guy in the fourth and you fill that spot. But anyway, you let me know in the comments. Are you for Christian Jones? Are you not for Christian Jones? Do you have someone else in mind at right tackle outside of the first round? Keen to hear it. As always, go Steelers.